Trash Talk Radio, coming at you live on MP3 from high on a hill above beautiful Lake Washington. I am Lester, and with me as always is the guru. Yes, sir, 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 yes, sir. And you know how this works. We're here to talk a little trash on the week's worth of sports. I don't know anybody except the guru. And the guru knows all. You know I know a little something something, man. You know that I know a little something, man. Guru, it is episode 42 and we are in the studio bright and early today. But the World Cup final just ended and viva la France. Bonjour, baby. Bonjour. We're going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about France's young kids and the possibility of them doing this again, man. And Ooh. again. Then, it's mid-season of the 2018 baseball season, so we've got Cisco from Baseheads on the line to talk about. And he is the realest. Cisco, the realest to talk. First half surprises and second half predictions with us on the baseball season. Then, in segment number two, Guru continues the countdown to kickoff with his top five tight ends. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Them tight ends, the new generation of receiving cores, baby. Then you know we got a very special two-minute drill this week. And that... Guru, episode number 42 at Trash Talk Radio. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. So, <laughs> so Guru, we are here, as I said, early. Hey, man. man. Hey, we're here early because we had our French toast this morning, baby. <laughs> we didn't have no Wheaties. We're not all about that American Wheaties cereal. We all about our Grey Poupon, baby. That French toast, baby. We figured we were up anyway watching the game. We might as well get in and get this, uh, get this through. Guru, how are you doing, man? It's good to see you. Man, I'm living a dream, man. Just living a dream. Don't pinch me, man. <laughs> how was your week? Anything I, interesting? Dude, actually, it was kind of funny. You remember last week was what, the, the anniversary? Yeah. Guess what? This week, she left me, man. What? She went somewhere for the whole weekend, man. So I've been alone just watching sports. Right. <laughs> hey. Hey, the funny thing is, I made it to, I told her I was all sad. I'm alone. Oh, my God. I can't believe I miss you. This, that. Luckily, I was happy as hell, man. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> hey, she better don't be watching this, but I was happy, man. I'm like, no, I have to worry about nothing, but just sit down and watch my, my Francois, baby. My French, man. Uh, you know, it's funny. I had the same thing this week when the, the uh, when Mrs. Lestro was like, would you mind if I took the baby to do this? I was like, I don't know, man. And then, you know, she leaves, and I'm like, baseball. <laughs> and then, like, just, just on the couch <laughs> watching baseball. Because I can't do anything without, the, without little Lestro turning towards the screen man as soon as we put something up on the tv he's just like <laughs> like no screen time for baby eyes oh, man. every oh, time man. right at it so uh so it was nice to have that you know we took out we took little lester to his first concert last night was what? the big excitement we took him out to see a friend of ours who is a, a wonderful composer and a piano performer had a concert last night here in the uh, puget sound area so we took little lester to his first concert and that was something funny. Now it wasn't like a big show, you know. It's not like not like Pearl Jam or, oh, or yeah. Jay Z and Beyonce, uh-huh. you know. It was a little scene. It's a local intimate setting. And he didn't quite get that because you know, in an intimate setting, you can't be like, Wah! yeah, but, there's some got to do with the crying aspect of things, right? right? Now he didn't cry, but he got very excited, and oh. you can't you can't stop him from being like. Wah! Oh, so is it one of those things like watching a tennis match or a golf where you can't say nothing or yes. breathe? Yes, because it was it was a very intimate sort of like piano recital oh. and composition. So like, ting, 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 ting. See that? It sounds like some sophisticated bourgeoisie things they do in Paris, baby. What are we doing here, Lestro? <laughs> I want to be in Paris right now. That's where you want to be right now. Why Dude, are we here? I would love to be in Paris right now. The footage of what's going on They're there going is crazy absolutely batshit in look Paris. Look at what's happening right now in, in the Eiffel Tower, man. The guru should be swimming right now, man, in that damn sea of crowd. Right. Hey, and look, and what's the color they're wearing over there? Oh. My favorite color, baby. The color of champions. The color of every great champion. I knew That's we were the getting color this. of blue, baby. I knew that this was blue. coming. I knew. <laughs> Yeah, that's cute. I knew this was coming. Guru, as, uh, as we teased in the intro, uh, France has won the World Cup with a, with a, a stunning, I wouldn't say stunning, stunning. With, a, with a fantastic victory over Croatia in, in the uh, World Cup final on Sunday. Uh, they wore their, their black with blue highlights. Guys, I know you were all about that. I was all about that, That man. blue again. They were the blue, man. They were blue. Now, Guru, I watched this game, and I, I admittedly, I don't know a whole lot about soccer, but my take on this oh, game... Oh, what? So you're a regular American? Damn right I am. 
Uh, I, but my take on this game was that Croatia seemed to want it more, but France was just a better team. Just a better team. My take on it, obviously, we're in the same uh, as far as spectrum. My take on this when I watched it from, uh, from my experienced eyes is, yes, Croatia had a better, as far as uh, a better game plan in a sense, but the French just more athletic, more younger. It's kind of remind me of kind of when uh, the Spurs kind of play uh, OKC when they had Russ and, yeah. and KD. It's like the Spurs were definitely a better team, had a better game plan, but they were just lacking athletic prowess. They certain things the athleticism could uh, could hide in a sense, you know. So that's what I love, like the young kid, like my man over there, Mbappe. Mbappe. Mbappe, man, the, the teenage sensation, man. 19 the, years old. The teenage sensation, the heart throb right now in the world, man. You know what, forget King James in L.A. My man Mbappe is the number one man in the world right now, man. Four, four goals in this tournament. At this teenage. Including oh, in the final. Including the finals. Big the, deal. Big deal. This is how big of the, the last time my teenager even scored in the finals was Pele. Pele. No, Pele. When you think about soccer, the one name you think about is Pele. Pele. And this happened in 1958. 1958, man. My man Mbappe wasn't even a sperm yet. My man in Burpray, he, he, he didn't even have a name yet, man. He was, that, a, he he, was a twinkle in the eye of a twinkle in his grandfather's pants. He, he was one of those guys that was hoping his daddy didn't jerk off, so waste his sperm on that. That's what Mbappe was, man, at that time. <laughs> now, Mbappe, he's so young that he actually wasn't even alive when France won the World Cup last time in 1998. That was 20 years ago. <laughs> he's only 19 he getting like him in a, there this time. He was like a little kid back then. He couldn't even. He was trying to walk like little Lester. He That's he was. he wasn't even born yet at that time, <laughs> and uh, and gets them gets them there again. Now I think Mbappe. First of all, it's a fantastic name. It is Mbappe. the kind of the kind of name that can take over the world too. You know what I mean? Like like Pele. Yeah. Mbappe is one you can see everywhere. Played a great game. Got his goal. Uh, fantastic. Now they got they got goals out of a lot of kids on that Dude, team. Dude, I love the youth of that man. That my other guy I love over there, Paul Pong Pongba. You know, I love my Africans, my West African with the Guinea parents, man. Paul Bonka and my man Mbappe. Without you, Bonka's about 25, man. So you really see how French national team are positioned themselves to actually do a back-to-back. -back. So basically for the next, oh, I want to say the next four years, which it comes out again, to actually be in position to dominate. So I'm really, I'm really interested to see what these guys are going to do. And one interesting thing about Mbappe, I didn't even know until I did my research, uh, before obviously the uh, the transfer, because over there in the Premier Leagues, they call it transfer. Yeah, it's not trade. They're, they're so sophisticated. They don't say trade like Americans. Transfer sounds so much better, right? Sounds so much better. So he was at that time the highest paid as far as transfers fees, uh, over $128 million that he transferred from his team for Monaco to the current team he's actually playing for right now. So uh, I think the team he's playing for is the Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, and excuse my pronunciation, because I, <laughs> I am American, and I ain't French. But damn it, for today, I'm French, baby. Viva la France! Viva, hey, don't say that as a Mexican way, man. You can't say viva la France. Viva la France? Viva la France. Isn't that viva la Mexico? Viva la France. Viva la France. Oh, oh, where's oh. my, hey, where's my great poupon, man? Oh, 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 Where, oh, oh. Hey, where's my French toes, friends? Man, get me that check. I'll take Francis. Hey, what's the France money over there? Francs. I'll take the francs too, man. <laughs> I, or no, they, or they, maybe they even use the euro. I'll take euros. Hey, man, I'll take it all, man. Send it down over to America, baby, and pay that <laughs> taxes see, see, for well me, mean. man. <laughs> Come on, Mbappe. You got enough money to send to the guru on TTR with. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we got France winning the, uh, the World Cup there. Let's a little bit to France here. Guru, do you think this is the kind of thing that they can sustain? Can they keep this going again because they got this youth? Hey, you know what? Just like everybody else in America, and we're gonna be very, very teacher our transparent. We ain't gonna give a damn to the next to three years or three and a half years from now. <laughs> so after this episode, we ain't gonna give a damn about him, Bob Way and um, Paul Bong Ba till about what? What's the next World Cup? Four years. Four years. What year? Two thousand. Uh, Twenty twenty-two. Yeah. So until two thousand twenty-two, you won't hear the guru or Lestro talk about any great poop Paul. <laughs> any of that situation, but we do love you all because we did have to do it because they're sending us that check. <laughs> right, and for today, though, if we could be in France, I want to be in the Eiffel Tower. You know we would be, man. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, well, Guru, that is, uh, of course, the, the World Cup there. Let's uh, let's transition back to the States. Oh, yeah, yeah, where the, yeah. Where the no, big... back to the Wheaties now. I got to eat Wheaties now. <laughs> They're delicious. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I got to get the Kyrie Irving on the Wheaties or something. Man. I want Mbappe on my Wheat. Hey, Wheaties, you better get Mbappe out there, baby. <laughs> I think you should get the guru on a Wheaties box. That's what I think you should get. But, uh, but guru, let's transition back to the States because we're going to talk a little baseball here. It is the midseason in, in Major League Baseball, and I know it's not your thing, but but this is the— Hey, man, it's not my whole thing, but I do like my Bryce Harper. I love my I, baseball guy because they get the ultimate check. What are you talking about? It's big money thing. possibilities. So we got a, we got our Cisco the Realist from our Basehead show over there on, uh, on, on World of Sports Network, the one I do every week where I get to talk baseball because you don't necessarily— want to talk to all them base heads you but you know we're bringing cisco the realist in so let's go to our call with cisco the realist you know we're going to talk a little bit about those washington nationals of yours we'll see what he thinks about how they're doing this year because i gotta tell you i'm not impressed because my philadelphia phillies are the number there one team we in go that league. again same old dog just a different day <laughs> shout out dmx baby <laughs> all right let's go to the phone call trash dog radio ttr <laughs> And we are back on Trash Talk Radio with Cisco the Realist from Baseheads. You can catch Baseheads every Saturday on the World of Sports Network.com. It is our baseball show with, with Cisco the Realist, myself, and the attorney at sports. Today on the show, though, we are bringing in Cisco. He is not a realist. He is the <laughs> realist. Cisco the realist, man. Welcome to Trash Talk Radio. His inaugural debut, Cisco the realist, man. I love Cisco. Uh, me and Cisco always go back and forth on the IG. Y'all go check out Cisco. Uh, he's He got a lot of informative information, man. I love this guy, man. Cisco, man, welcome to the show, buddy. Welcome. How are you doing, boss? Well, guys, I'm doing great. Thank you for bringing me on today. Our pleasure, man. We're here to talk a little bit of baseball. We figured we got to talk a base head to do it. So, Cisco, it is the all-star break in baseball. The uh, home run derby was Monday. The all-star game is today, Trash Talk Tuesday. We got games starting up again on Friday for the rest of the season, but we figured we would talk about the first half with the man who knows. So, Cisco, let's get right into it, and let me just ask you, watching the first half of this season, what surprised you most in the first half of this baseball season? Man, honestly... And, like, I know that Guru is a Washington guy. Man, the Washington National, both the team, the manager, and Bryce Harper. You know all what? Three of them has been, all three of them has been a shocker. I agree, man. This was a team that at the beginning of the season was everybody's pick to win the NL East. They are currently sitting way back behind the Phillies. <laughs> Behind the Phillies, uh, they're behind uh, my Phils there in the NL East, and and just sort of, just sort of struggling along. What is going man, on? We still got a half a season to go, man. Don't get don't get too high ahead of yourself. Go ahead, don't well, get right, too. Well, right now, it seems like there is a lot of it's, it. It looks like there is a lot of pressure between the manager being new and Bryce Harper being in the contract year, plus the injuries. Yeah. This was really affecting. This was really affecting the team. Like uh, uh, Dave Martinez came in with a lot of pressure, tremendous pressure, because they fired. They fired Dusty Baker mm -hmm. after after he got into the playoffs. Say, regardless of what people want to say, he got into the playoffs, and yeah. Dusty Baker is a legend. Mm -hmm. So he, so he's very. Those are some very tough shoes to fill. But Bryce Harper, all of the pressure about him setting the market in the free agency is have gotten to him and them. Yeah, let's Flat talk a, injury. Let's talk a little bit about Bryce Harper uh, on that because he's supposed to be the four hundred million dollar man. That check. Five hundred. Oh, whoa, whoa. It's five hundred million. He's a five hundred million man, dollar man, get, Guru. Get out of here, man. He's, that's beyond check. He's about to get that billionaire check. He's about to get that Amazon check, man. Not LeBron check. Amazon <laughs> check. Seen, seen well a beam. So Yeah, he was he was supposed to be the 500. Washington made the offer for him for the extension, but he didn't took it for the 400. So I mean, so now what's going on with Bryce Harper? Do you think it's probably? Do you think it's partially Martinez having him bat in that lead up lead off spot that he's doing, or what is happening well, with Bryce Harper? I, I think there is a combination of things. Like Scott Boris mentioned, is the chief. But if Bryce Harper is so good, he will make adjustment to that. And if mm. he was as good as he's advertised, you know that's but, true. 
But this is the thing about Dave Martinez. If a guy is a struggle in the old baseball time, outside of this analytic BS, <laughs> it would be you will have your best guy if he's struggling like that, hit him in the bottom, not hit him out front. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's now, uh, Harper, this year, it, what it is is that his average is down. His home runs and his power are still there. He's still got, you know, 20-some-odd home runs, but he's not hitting for average, and you don't want your leadoff guy hitting home runs. You want him hitting he's, for average. You man, want your boppers hitting middle. Every home run counts for at least 10 to $20 million, Right. right? <laughs> every single counts for maybe 500000 well, So what do you think? If I was Bryce, I'm thinking to hit. 500 home runs. I want that 500 million. Well, Guru, you know how it is. Chicks dig the long ball. Ah. <laughs> but, and but, this, but this is the thing. This is this is a man that he usually he gets on base. He's not getting on base no. as he had in the past. He is striking out a lot more than he ever had. It's not only we are looking at, oh, the power numbers are there, but he's also struggling. He's not walking as much. And again, this is a man who's never throwing in 100 RBIs in his career, and he's not going to do that this year. Not going to do it this year. This, 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 is, this, is, this, is something, this is something serious for, for a guy who's going to set the market. I mean... So, Cisco, uh, let, me, let me ask you this, man. Are we looking at, uh, a, a, in, in a surprise, the Nationals and Harper are one of our surprises for the year. We're going to get your predictions later, but can they... Uh, can the Nationals turn this around, or should they trade Harper now? Should Ooh, they just should should just, should just clean, clean They 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 are not they are not gonna turn it around for that. Not because they are not capable. It's just that the Phillies and the Braves are just that good not oh to let. Them Gu Guru, did you hear that? The Phillies are just that good. Oh my God! I Come like on, this guy, Cisco. You can be on the show whenever you want. Cisco man. is really a base head, man. <laughs> Well, Cisco, tell us some of your other surprises from the season. We got the Nationals, we got Bryce Harper. What else has surprised you? What uh, what teams or players have, have you know uh, exceeded expectations in the first half? Well, uh, you know, uh, a team that has surprised me that really turned it around, believe it or not, is the Boston Red Sox. They really came on and really have exceeded their expectation, and things have gone their way. And no matter how about what people want to say about their their bullpen not being there and like having reason, but the Red Sox answer the questions. Their pitching staff came on and they been good. David Price has been so so, not as good as Arredis, not as good as he should have been, but Porcelo has bounced back. Uh, sales can have come strong, and JD Martinez has been the best. All season acquisition by far. Absolutely. Living up to the contract there. Now, the Red Sox were a good team last year, but they are killing it right now. And they really are the best team in baseball. So then the next question becomes can the Yankees catch them? The Yankees can catch them, but the problem with the Yankees is that the Red Sox lineup is a little bit more balanced than the Yankees and their pitching staff. The starter has a little bit more depth. Their starters are more secure than the Yankees started. And, and just to let people know, because I want to put this out there, uh, 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 Cisco, where are you located regionally? I am in Massachusetts, but I am oh, in well, well, so you Oh, so in the backyard of the Boston right. fan base, right? But he's a Yankee fan in Boston. But I'm a Yankee fan. Oh, yeah. I just want to put it out there. Yeah, so we got to make sure All my know. Boston fans out there, go search where Cisco the Realist live. Go follow his Instagram and get on him for being a betrayal, <laughs> betrayal, betrayal fan base. Kick him out. Raise his taxes no. over there. Raise his taxes. What are you crazy? That's what I want people he's a, to do. He's an undercover New Yorker in Boston. You let, you let him you let him be, man. He is he is a gathering intel and info oh. for Yankee fans. He's a double agent out there in B-Town. Oh, man, Cisco's showing favoritism, man. That's all he's doing. The real no. is my butt, man. So, Cisco, listen, before we run out of time with you, I got to get your uh, your first half MVPs and Cy Youngs as well. So tell me who in this first half has really uh, really put it together, both hitters and pitchers. Who do you like MVP and Cy Young for first half? In both, in which league? Either one. Both. I don't care, okay. man. Bring it on. Okay. In the, in the American League, my MVP... This first half of the season 
has been J.D. Martinez. You know, it's okay. tough to by, disagree by, with that. By, okay. by, 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 by far, I mean, like, Mike Trout has been spectacular. I understand that he's arguably the best player in baseball. Yeah. But J.D. Martinez has done it, like, the numbers, like, put up the stats. Baseball is a number game. And J.D. And JD is a contender. He's a triple crown contender. It's very tough to debate against him. Mookie Betts went down. Mookie Betts went down, and JD picked up the pace, and he never looked back. Now, I, you know, I think you're right here. Every, Trout is having one of the all-time great seasons in baseball. Uh, literally, having the single best single player season in baseball, statistically speaking, we've ever seen. That said, I heard that one before about Mike Trout. Well, yeah, and that said, his <laughs> team still sucks. Yeah, I heard about so, that. J.D. Martinez, while maybe statistically not having the season that Trout is, has certainly been more valuable to the Red Sox because it's it's Martinez, like Cisco says, uh, stepping up when bets went down and living up to that contract that has allowed the Red Sox to be the best team in baseball this year. So I think that's a great pick. How about your uh, your Cy Young for this for the uh, first half of the season in the AL? The AL. And the the Cy Young for the first half of the season, and this is very this is very tough because. I think both guys has been great. Uh, I have a dilemma between Chris Sale and Luis Severino, but I think Chris Sale has been the most dominant pitcher, like in the American League. So I, so he is my first half Cy Young award. But at the end, but at the end, if Severino win twenty five game, which is what I'm projecting, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough Do at the end. Consider. Now, not Cisco, yet, not Cis- to consider. Cisco, we just got the high sign yeah, from our producer so, saying we got a, we got about five so minutes I, left. I, I so let's squeeze, get. I want to squeeze. Hang on, let me get your the, NL uh, MVP okay. and Cy Young before we move on. So give me your NL Cy Young and MVP. Well, my NL MVP, he hasn't let me down. Has been <laughs> Nolan Arenado. Never let you. Been, All right, so uh, I got to tell I think, you, I got to jump in here. Cisco, at the beginning of the season on our pre- season preview in Baseheads, was talking Nolan Arenado as being one of the best, if not the best players in baseball, and. He was right. So go ahead, Cisco. This is your time, Cisco. Tell another us. guy, another guy that been challenging him. Believe it or not, is Javier Baez. Javier Baez been challenging him for that over on the Cubs. That award because he have him and the Cubs. Javi Merch. Yeah, now they've showed up in first place. They were out for a while. And I got to tell you something. Javi Baez has stolen two, stolen home base twice this year. I love a dude that steals home, especially <laughs> twice. So I, I, I happen to enjoy watching him play more than I like Arenado. But but that's a good one. All right, now tell us your Cy Young for the National League. Uh, this should be an easy been the one. one. He's been the one. I've been rolling with this guy for the last three years. Yep. And I'm going to throw with him again this year and next year. Mike Gerson. <laughs> And yeah, Scherzer. Scherzer. He surprise, said this year is surprise. Uh, and next year. Yeah, right? yeah. Scherzer's yeah, just – you know what? That's an easy one. There's no need to discuss that. Scherzer has been the best pitcher in the National League. So uh, we're running out of time. I know Guru's got a question just for you, though. Just real quick, man, because I already know this is the first half. I want to hear your second half prediction as far as uh, our teams, as far as who's going to go on the independent, and who do you see, do you see any surprises uh, as far as – like my Nats – I'm uh, making an unbelievable run to get into the race. <laughs> like, what do you see? Um, give me a prediction uh, yeah, that's for, the next, for the next half of the season. Well, I see in the second half of the season, I see the Philly winning their division. That's what I'm talking about. I I love- see, I, I, this is, this is less reason I'm going to like this. I see the Colorado Rocky winning the West. Really? Rockies? Yes. They're and, in, like, uh, third now. Rockies? Yes, I see the Colorado Rocky emerging as the team surprisingly i like that man i like that you know what hey, the show ballsy we like hey, a ballsy I see, pick i see that i see that oakland A's emerging as one of the wild card whoa like, someone is that, on that and i and i see the yankees surprisingly surprisingly getting close on the division and you're gonna come down to the last week all right so who do you got winning the al thank you I got winning the AL. I got the Red Sox. The Red Sox winning the AL. They're you think they're better than the Astros? No, they are not. They are not better than the Astros. But they'll beat no. them in a series. But they'll beat the Astros in a series. But they, n- n- I don't think so. And I think the Astros will be the team that are gonna go back to the World Series. Okay, so the Astros win the AL and not the Red Sox. Who are they gonna play in the National League? What's your National League shaping up like? My national league, my national league shaping up. It all depends on the outcome. It all depends on where, where Manny Machado go. Because if Manny Machado goes to the Phillies, 
I probably I'm probably gonna go with the Phillies to go to the World Series. I like the Ooh. sound of that. I like the sound of that. Ooh. That works for me. Uh, so then we got the Phillies if Machado goes. So then uh, the question then, final question, Cisco, because we are we are out of time with you, uh, unfortunately. Tell me uh, who you think, where do you think Machado is going? Uh, and, and Philly. You think he's going Philly. to Philly? You think that's yeah, I it? I think he's going to Philly. And and I, think, I think because because he's going to have an input on the decision. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he himself is going to like that idea of going there to play Georgetown. You know what? I agree with that, and, and I think and, he'll look and, great and, in red. And Philly going to give him that check, right? Yeah, you're damn right they will. And Philly's going to give him that extension when he's going to stay there because he's the perfect matchup for him. So is he going to get that Bryce Harper check? I guess that's what we're looking for. Is he going to get that Bryce check or that Kirk Cousin you, check? This is, look, this is, then remember this. If he goes to Philly, he's going to get, he's probably going to set the market. And not only that, he is going to live up to his contract. Woo! Might, not, might not produce the way that people want him to produce, but when it comes to get for him to go there and get and do what he got paid for, he's gonna do that. All right. I love the you sound of it. that. Cisco, you made you made this Philly fan very happy, my man. <laughs> That is our time with Cisco here. Buddy, uh, Cisco the Realist, he's not a realist. He's the realist. You can find Cisco the Realist on Instagram. That is Cisco the Realist EST. <laughs> Look for Cisco, C-I-S-C-O, the Realist EST on there. Cisco, my man, you can catch him every weekend on Baseheads with me and the attorney at sports. Thank you for joining us today on TTR, Cisco. Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir, Thank Cisco. you for inviting me. And we will talk to you again as this season goes on. You know we're not done with this baseball stuff for the year. Cisco, the realist. I love the realist because every realist we had in this show always went against my my DMV Washington teams, and I always have the last laugh. You know, (laughs) just like that. I always have the last laugh. So, Cisco, I will see you in what? In mid, in late September, baby. We'll talk then. In late September. Check out. All right, my brother. Take care. Thanks, Cisco. We'll talk to you again. All right. Bye. Guru, we are back, and I told you he wasn't going to have nice things to say about your nationals, you know man. What? I expect that from the realist, man. <laughs> He's the realist. I always make this joke, and that's my buddy, man. But I'm changing his name, man, just because of that. Instead of Cisco the realist, it's called Costco. <laughs> Costco the realist, baby. He got all the discounts over there. <laughs> Our thanks to Cisco the Realist from Baseheads for uh, for talking baseball with us. We got to take a quick break on here on uh, on Trash Talk Radio. We're gonna be back with segment two. Guru, you've got your uh, as the countdown to kickoff continues. You've got your top five tight ends Let's going in this it, year, baby. right? If you all remember the last year, the who caught the game winning Super Bowl champ pass? What position? Tight end. The tight end, baby. I, actually, quarterback. I think caught with the Nick Foles was the what, no? no no Zach Hurts. All man. right, fine. Man, the Philly guy. You remember Zach Hurts? I remember the Nick game. Foles. Winning touchdown, man. I Get remember, out of here. I remember Nick Foles and, and, and little else because there was a lot of alcohol. All right, so we'll be right back on Trash Talk Radio with segment two. Thanks for listening to Trash Talk Radio. <laughs>